Uh, David Rin. I'm a chartered accountant. I'm from Albury, which is a regional city in Australia. It's situated approximately halfway between Sydney and Melbourne. Cool. How long have you been in Thrival now? Been in Thrival for about uh, three months. Man, you've been an really, awesome... Really, really enjoying it. Yeah, you've been an awesome member from the from Australia there. So, all right, so I got some questions. See if you can encourage other people running their own firm. So the first one... Yep. So what things are difficult right now in running your own firm? I think I think that probably the hardest thing is just coping with the volume of things that are going on. You know, there's just such a, a massive volume of uh, work, of uh, business development, of multiple tasks that I've got to I've got to manage because I'm a I'm a sole practitioner on my own trying to do all these sort of things. And I guess if I if I drew a bit of a, a, a metaphor, it would have to be. The, the, the truck driver who's driving the, the overloaded 18-wheeler right. down the highway and he's uh, got the boss on the radio and he's yeah. in his ear and he's telling him to pick up more loads and drive faster and, and uh, you know, all, all of a sudden you sort of start to hit a bit of a, um, a fog or, or some bad weather, we right. call it tax season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and probably, probably you know, you, you've really got to put the brakes on the truck you know, just to slow the rig down and, and try and get back in a bit of control, so you don't, uh, you, you know, you don't wind up sort of, um, you know, having having an accident or making a mistake, a professional mistake, that sort of thing. So, you know, there's, like I said, there's just a lot of stuff going on, and and the, probably the key thing would be time management for me. Yeah, uh, that's that's a that's a big challenge. Um, and the other one I'm trying to work on too is just uh, trying to get a, a frictionless approach to the onboarding of customers. Just trying to make it easy for people to be able to deal with me, to 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 be engaged, to to uh, to sign on to the firm. And probably the other thing I find a little bit difficult too is is working on the creative side, like things like blogging and yep. uh, the website. It's just as an accountant, that's just sort of something that's a little bit out of my out of my comfort zone. Yep. Um, but I'm getting better at it. Well, cool. Yeah, no, no, that's good stuff. I think that's probably what most people are dealing with some of that stuff. So, Very so the good. second one. So, how would you encourage others that are running and growing their own firms? I mean, what would you tell other people? Yeah, I think probably the the, the fundamental thing is to be open and transparent with your customers, particularly when it's coming down to pricing cool. and, and engagement. I think scope creep uh, is is a big problem. Also, under underquoting, yeah. uh, underestimating the time taken to actually complete tasks. Right. Um, the other thing too I'd sort of say is encourage your customers to actually pick up the phone to send emails and up to ask, ask questions, um, you know, and, and take the time to try and define who you want to work with and and uh, the types of customers that you, that you want in, 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 your, in your business. Um, look, don't, and just don't take anybody on board. It's very easy when you're starting out just to say yes to anybody. But you you soon find out that that's uh, that's, that's not a that's not a, a good move, no. um, and be prepared to say no. Be prepared to say no to work that is outside of your skill set, or or customers that don't fit your particular particular profile of the firm, you know. But one of the things is you'll you'll encounter people who will sort of um, they might be perceived as like tire kickers or time wasters, right. but you've got to be prepared to talk to everybody mm -hmm. and at least engage everybody in a, in a conversation and, and invest that little bit of time and just make your decision based on that. Um, the third thing I'd probably say is just make sure that you you keep learning. I yeah. think what happens in our profession is a lot of people become very stale. They don't yeah. uh, invest time in you know the 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 sort of more of the soft skills, things like uh, you know business planning. Um, uh, coaching, you know, there's a lot of focus on tax technical stuff. Oh yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, we're expected to keep up up to date with all the tax technical stuff, but and the accounting technical stuff. But you know, it's that softer skills that you know that's sort of what our clients need. They need that. They need that sort of mentoring and coaching, and and uh, you know, that's something that I'm working on too. Yeah, but I think that's something accountants lack probably more than anything is the soft well, skills. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, Jason. I mean, and that's why I joined Thrival because yeah. it's not a technical group. Mm -hmm. It's it's about developing those particular skills to make us make us better advisors. Yeah, you know, as opposed to um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that's that's where I want to go with it. Well, that's good. So so, what does the future hold for your firm? How how do you want to grow in the future, man? 
Well, at, at the moment, obviously defining who we are and how we work, I, I thought about the approach of going completely virtual and uh, working from home. But at the end of the day, the, the, the customer base still wants to see me. They still want to pop in and say hello. And, that, and that's really important, particularly when you're working in a, in a regional, regional area yep. um, where you have a, a lot of those traditional small business clients who, who still want to come and see you. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing too is we've partnered up with a, a couple of local uh, quality financial planning firms, one, one here locally um, who I share the office with here and, and another one in Sydney. And that's opened the door to a, a new customer base, particularly the local firm because the, the, new, the, the local firm has uh, a lot of clients who have been serviced by um, other accounting firms around town, bigger yeah. firms. and. And they haven't been particularly well serviced, well looked after over the years. Wow. So we're finding that those clients are, uh, are coming to me and, and they're really sort of um, appreciating what they're getting. Very cool. Yeah, so probably, and probably the other thing too is in terms of like the staffing and you know how I mentioned, talked about the overload and that, mm -hmm. probably longer term, maybe in about 12 months, I'm looking at possibly taking on a business partner. Wow. So um, yeah, sort of just a, just sort of someone who's in the sort of has the same sort of mindset as me, maybe someone who's um, maybe a female yeah. because you know fifty percent of business owners are, are female, so that's a good complementary yeah. um, uh, type of type of person to have. But but particularly sort of someone who's 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 interested in technology, who's interested in, in things like zero and and uh, making making a real difference. Cool. Oh, so. So I, I think you use a lot of technology to serve your customers. So maybe what's one product you use uh, to serve your customers well? Well, primarily we're, we're a zero practice. So we are 100% zero. We don't do any accounting or any bookkeeping unless it's on the zero platform. Cool. And there's a simple reason for that is that zero has really revolutionized the way that we work. We have clients uh, across Australia and also some clients internationally from the United States, from uh, the United Kingdom, from New Zealand, from the Pacific Islands. So it gives us that ability, A, we can work from anywhere, but our clients can also be from anywhere as well. Um, and, and just the, the whole zero ecosystem, how it sort of, you know, it, it links in with other, other things. So we use things like Fathom, which is a, yeah. a KPI and, and management, management tool. Um, we also use, uh, Got a couple of clients using GeoOp, which is for uh, tradesmen and, yep. and that, and um, yeah, and, and Unleashed, which is an inventory system as well. So you know, the whole zero thing has really sort of changed the way we work. And what we're what we're sort of all about is is moving beyond that stage where you know a lot of a lot, lot in the past what we've done is we've done a lot of accounts and a lot of tax returns, doing it nine months after year end, we want to get, get away from that and actually sort of, if we can get a lot of our clients on a zero, we're actually about, we're, we're sort of like you, you know, we're, yeah. we're interested in selling transparency. Right. In, interested in actually having clients understand where they, what their financial position is at any particular point of time in, in the accounting cycle, yeah. not, you know, 12 months down the track. Yeah. So, so we're getting more and more into things like management reporting, um, sort of real-time tax management and uh, strategic planning as well. Awesome, man! You got all kind of stuff going on, man. You're making a lot of changes, man. I right. I, I appreciate yeah. you joining us all the way from Australia for the Bill.com Thrival in the Trenches video cast. It's been awesome to have you, dude. Thanks very much, Jason. Really appreciate it. All right, take care, man. Okay, see you, mate.